Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason and this is a live stream. And I've just realized I've got a jumper hanging up there. So professional, look, you can see it. in my t-shirt. So basically, I do these live streams on um, Facebook, um, Facebook quite often. And I have done quite a few live streams in the past on YouTube. So what I decided to do is to kind of intermingle, do a bit of both, if, you, if that makes sense. So what I need to do is just go to the My internet's playing up a little bit at the moment, I don't know why. Okay, right. Bear with me, I'm with you here. So those of you that are listening on a podcast you know after the event then the live sessions are a little bit different in as much as sometimes I interact um, so you know with the people that might come on here. Although I've just had a, I don't know, someone just come and said hello. Uh, anyway, so I need to share this to Facebook so that people who normally watch me on Facebook can't, can watch me here. So yeah, the whole idea behind these videos is that I bore you to sleep. That's the whole point of it. There is nothing more to it than that. So I just talk or, I don't know, like an hour. And at the end of it, you'll be so bored, you'll just fall asleep. That's it really, in a, a banana skin, that's the whole thing. So once I've shared it, then I can just get on with the whole thing and I won't give it any more attention. Like sharing stuff, I just, it's just good to let people know what I'm doing. You can hear the laptop, it's so noisy. I should warn you, or not warn, but just remind you to only listen to this, watch this video, listen to me when you can safely close your eyes because being a sleepy session um, is probably not a good idea if you're hand gliding or you know something like that. So I just post it to Google Plus. Oh, Google Plus. 
what else should I post it to? Tumblr. Post it on Tumblr. Oh, can you hear that? That sound of, that's the sound of a, a laptop that needs, <laughs> needs replacing. Now I'll post it to Pinterest. No, Pinterest. Pinterest. So I'll just post that there. So that's done. Next I'll post it to, I think this is, is vk.com. So I'll post it there. Uh, where else should I post it? Uh, LinkedIn. Should I post it to LinkedIn? Yeah. Why not? Post it to LinkedIn. Something to do, isn't it? Mm. Oh, I made a weird noise then. So share and a post, yep. Done. So this is number 65. This is the 65th, let me bore you to sleep. Which is, it's quite a lot actually, isn't it? Probably too many. But hey, I spent my whole life being repetitive. Why stop now, eh? Yeah. Okay, right. So that's it. I'm turning the computer off. So I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, whether or not you can actually send messages or not. I don't know. I'm enjoying that quiet. It's nice, isn't it? Just to have a bit of peace. Oh, it's nice. Today I've been... I've been really, with the last few days, I've been really working towards producing more videos, more um, like better quality videos, you know, like pictures, not pictures, but how shall I explain it? You know, sort of like just, you know, with introductions, maybe a little music, maybe music underneath me talking a bit. I've, I've done the, quite a bit of experimentation over the years with things and I personally prefer just to talk and just to, uh, for it just to be me talking. Um, but I know that sessions, like relaxation sessions with music, and with like a nice image or maybe a mixture of images of wildlife and the sea and they're really popular. So I'm thinking of maybe trying to do a few of those kind of videos um, just to, you know, to see if people like them. Um, so I've been, I've already had I've got this uh, Coral Video Studio X7, which I've had for probably two years, maybe less, maybe more. And I've started, I've used it before. I don't, I can't know if I'm playing around with it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I've used video editing software before, 
but just the free ones you get with Windows or you get online, you know. So I started to kind of experiment to do introduction, little introduction videos and to just, I don't know, I just thought it'd be nice to play around with it to see what I can, what I can come up with. But at the same time, with the video software, I can actually edit the audio as well. Um, as far as uh, just make it like cut it, make it uh, sort of fade in and fade out and uh, do a bit of graphics. So I'm just gonna play around with that. But, or plus, and I wanna do more live streaming as well because the one thing that um, there isn't really any difference between me doing a live stream or me recording a session because it's still the same it's still me just talking and in pretty much every single session I've ever done there's no rehearsal, there's no editing. Generally, it's just me talking. And um, so whether I do it on a camera with no one watching, which is kind of what I'm doing now actually, but, or if I do it with, you know, however many people come online to watch, it's the same. It's not this, it's not the same, but it's, something a bit nicer I quite like the idea of the connection that can be got or gained by being live by streaming live there's something quite nice about that something quite special there's a, a connection that is happening here and now. And you think about it really, isn't it amazing that I can sit here in my living room and I can talk and broadcast live to the whole world, apart from those countries that ban YouTube, um, or you know, because there are some countries that don't allow YouTube. So apart from that, I'm avail you know, I'm around, available to billions of people, potentially, or three, you know, people that I'll probably get, but. And 20 years ago, this would seem like a miracle. 20 years ago, for me, to broadcast live to the other side of the world, I'd have to have a film crew, I'd have to have a van outside just to broadcast to the rest of the country. I'd have to have a, like three or four big vans outside with miles of cable cameras and everything in order to broadcast live I've, I used to, I've seen the broadcasting vans in the past uh, even now uh, I've seen you know well not recently but in the past but now I can do it on a phone or on a laptop and just put a title in, press go live, and that's it. Isn't that amazing? I just think it really is amazing, the technology that's available. 
That's why I guess I try and use um, the technology for good to a to a degree, you know, in a sense of like I think, well, what can I, what can I do with this amazing opportunity to reach an audience worldwide? So I want, I want, I'll do this. I'll, I know this isn't technically hypnosis, but. It's me just talking and there's more to this than just being bored into feeling sleepy. Something that I didn't realise when I first started doing these Let Me Bore You To Sleep uh, live broadcasts is I kind of become like a friend to some people, like a a regular person, a regular friendly voice for someone to listen to and I've, I've kind of become a part of some people's lives and I didn't intend that to happen. I, you know, I didn't really have that in my mind. But there's a degree of company, like, that some people gain from me being on here. And you know what? In some ways, I feel the same. Sometimes I feel that by doing this live, I'm kind of, I've got company myself. Um, I'm not on my own, although I'm not on my own because I've got a little ferret called Andre, so I'm never on my own, but, you know, just as far as human interactions go, uh, I do have human interactions, but not a huge amount, to be fair. So, yeah, what was it this morning? or yesterday morning, because it's now about half one in the morning. Yesterday morning, about the same time as now, uh, a friend on Facebook uh, posted, he sent me a message, uh, and he seemed quite distressed, so I phoned him. I phoned him on Facebook, and just had a chat with him for an hour. So I've never met him. I've known him on Facebook for a, I don't know, eight, eight years or seven years, something like that. So I've never actually met him, but I've spoken to him a few times. And it's amazing, you know, just press the phone button and you can speak to somebody. It doesn't cost loads of money. It doesn't cost anything other than the internet connection. So if I was outside, it would cost, you know, it'd take my data, but I don't use the internet really when I'm outside. So I've got my broadband, I could phone the entire world all day long, every day, and wouldn't cost anything. Isn't that amazing that we have that technology? That's all I've got to say about that. So I'm gonna have a little drink. It's just a uh, Coca-Cola. Mmm. Quite thirsty. I think it's because I've got the radiator behind me. So if you, if you see a bit of smoke starting to rise from my back, you'll know. Perhaps you can let me know so I can move away from the radiator. So what I was going to say, I'm not going to say anything, I'm just going to talk. I don't know what I'll talk about today. Let me think. 
think of growing a beard like really, really long. I'm talking like silly long. Because I was looking at some pictures. Um, I was transferring, basically clearing the laptop of stuff and putting it onto the hard drive. Got an external hard drive. Uh, so sort of four terabytes. So I was moving my stuff off to the off of the laptop in the hope that it will stop it working so hard, you know? So it can kind of calm itself down a bit and not be making all that fuss. And I came across a bunch of pictures of me, uh, like videos old videos and some of them like a big beard and I was surprised because some of these videos like I'd made a video in October this is like 2014 or 2015 or something and it was a, I think it was a vlog that I did and I had a beard that was much shorter than this it was kind of just a grown out stubble and then by the December, it was out there. It has a massive beard. So I've got um, so Javier Moore, Mundo has just joined, hi. So I've got, I didn't realize that people could actually say hello on here. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube. I should know that, I've, I've spoken to people on YouTube before when the, I've done a live broadcast. Uh, so hi, thank you for joining, thank you for liking if you have, click the like button. I'm going to be doing more YouTube uh, streams. So I'm going to sleep, I'm not actually going to stream my sleep. I won't be falling asleep. The reason I don't do that, and I have done it in the past, because um, you just asked me that. I have, if you look through some of my videos, there's some of them, like the sleep ones, and I'm actually in bed. And I'm like that, cu no, curled up in bed and just like whispering uh, into the camera. So Javier wants me to watch me sleeping. Well, you can on some of those videos, but what happened is... I don't think I broadcasted those live, but when I, so I filmed it and then I fell asleep, but when I watched it, it was really calm and everything, I fell asleep and then I started snoring really loudly, so that's not conducive to helping people to sleep if you, I sound like a bear with an itch, you know, it's really kind of, it, it wasn't good um, or a pig trying to eat a toffee apple I don't know but I'm trying to think of a, uh, an example of what I could sound like or a JJ trying to sleep so I I won't be falling asleep although I possibly will have my eyes closed at some points because I like to I like to close my eyes. It's one of my favourite things. It's like a hobby. Um, I do get a little bit of... My eyes get a bit tired because I spend probably way too much time looking at screens, you know, like laptop and television and the phone and stuff. So kind of my eyes get a little bit tired. So I enjoy something I do quite like. Uh, I've been listening to Audible books. It's a, a website called Audible. I don't know if you've heard of it. And for the, um, you basically you pay a certain amount a month, and you get one credit each month, which allows you to download a book. And you can also choose other books you can download and pay for them. 
also if there's a whatever book you buy for, with the credit if you don't like it you can just recoup your credit and get another book without even telling them why I've not done that yet but what I have done is I think I've had three credits and I've got some really good books uh, sort of psychology uh, textbooks with lectures and stuff like that and uh, I really just like sort of laying back in my big black squeaky chair and listening to Audible, listening to, to one of the books on my lap, on my phone, just press play and on the app. And sometimes I just, I will fall asleep, I'll be honest. And I'll be listening for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. So some of it's going to sink in, some of it's going to be, uh, become a part of me. I don't know how much of it, that's why I'm careful what I listen to, but I don't really listen to fiction. I, I like I like to try and um, improve my education when it comes to things I listen to, unless it's music, then um, I'm kind of I do like classical music. Uh, I used to listen to it a lot a few years back. Very relaxing. It's, um, I think the thing with some of the classical music stations, there's, like on the radio, it's, there's adverts. And I, I just, I like the music especially like, I like piano, but I like, um, like a violin or, what's that big giant violin? The, the bass that you hold up, it's like a big, either it's a big violin or they're just really, really like elves, they're kind of very small and they it's too big to hold up, so they go like that. Um, because I used to play the violin when I was a kid. When I was about, well, I played quite a few instruments. I don't know if I've, I've probably talked about this in the past. You know these videos, these audios, uh, these let me bore you to sleep things. It's going to come a time, there's got to be a time when I end up just repeating the same things because, you know, each one's normally about an hour. That's my chair squeaking, sorry about that. My other chair, which is identical to this one, they're basically twins, doesn't squeak. And I sit on that most of the time. This one, I don't know what, it's quite weird because this, these chairs and this table, I know you can't see the table, but I inherited that from my nan. And my nan used to have it, have the table and the chairs in her, because she lived in sheltered accommodation for the last like six, six years. Uh, for her life and she as she walked into her because basically the sheltered accommodation there was a main door where you could well that's, there was a back door and people used to leave it open and they shouldn't have done but so you used to walk down there used to be a like, garden and stuff and you could actually walk past it and not realise it was even there it's like this little hidden place it wasn't hidden because no one would find it, would they? But so you go in. There wasn't a big like maze hedge, you know, nothing like that. But you could walk down the path. Um, opposite, I think there was a. There was like this 
furniture shop. I think they also sold carpets and rugs. Maybe even kitchen stuff. I don't know. But it'd been there. I think it was like called Bloomfields or some name like that. And been around for absolutely years and years and years. It was been around, it was, it was older than my, you know, so I don't know, so it's old, older than my favourite pair of socks, it was older than that, and so across the road from there, it's just, it looked more like an alleyway, like you go into a, turned into a car park. But then when you go up, you could see that there was these windows, but there was trees and there's grass. So you'd walk up this path and it led round to the right, which was the main entrance. And you couldn't just walk in. Um, you had to press the bu buzzer for the address, the, you know, the number that you wanted. And... So I used to go in there. My nan wasn't always there. Sometimes she'd be in the, like they had this uh, communal hall where they, you know, some of them used to get together, uh, play Scrabble, um, I don't know, smoke cigars, play poker. I don't know, whatever they got up to. Uh, jigsaw puzzles. Um, discos, uh, you know, I don't know what pensioners do. Or I was never really there in the evening, but sometimes she'd be in there and she'd say, hey, boy, she'd point at me and say, come in. And she'd show me off to her friends saying, this is, this is my grandson. And they'd just look at me that's, that's the end of that story really so I'd go into the main entrance sometimes if she wasn't there or she she might have been busy doing something else so she couldn't answer the door um, so I'd like knock on the window and uh, the lady that was working there for years she got to know me and she'd let me in and I'd sometimes, uh, I'd say oh, it's Jason's, Eileen's grandson, and she'd just look at me. Yeah, that was the end of that bit as well. Um, so I go in, turn right, and down the hallway, just trying to remember, there's one, two, three, or probably five doors or six doors down would be her door and I'd knock on the door and if she knew I was coming she'd probably quite often she'd just leave the door open I'd walk in she'd catch her trying to climb out the window to escape so she was on the ground floor, so it was all right. Burnt herself on the radiator though. So it's the table that I've got now, the table and chairs were on the left hand side. So she used to go in, there'd be like, it wasn't really a hallway. It was a very small hallway where on the left hand side there was a shelf and like, yeah on the shelf and it had lots of boxes of uh, photographs that my nan had from going back many many years you know 100 years or whatever uh, photographs of her grandparents so more than 100 years 
and so that was there. I think I used to put my coat. I don't know if it was on a hanger, there might have been a little coat rack or something like that and I'd put my coat down and take my shoes off or leave them on depending on um, whether I could get away with it. And then as you walk in on the right hand side, pretty much opposite where the, the boxes of photos were, because the boxes, they were these, they weren't just ordinary boxes, they were, I don't know how to explain it, As they were nice, really sturdy boxes with big lids, you know, and they were as if they were made specifically to hold lots of photographs. And opposite that was the bathroom. Pretty sure, yeah, the the bathroom it had uh, because it was it was a residential place. They had two cords in the bathroom, which were right next to each other. One was for the light, and one was to um, ask for help. So it's, uh, I can imagine, you can imagine the amount of times I pulled the wrong one. Sometimes it was by mistake. So the bathroom, it was a nice little bathroom. And it had a bath. I think eventually the bath got converted so that it could be like a walk-in shower. And then next to the bathroom, if you, I guess there was a sink on the left, no, I think the sink was on the right hand side as you go into the bathroom. And I think the door opened, so you'd hold your right hand and pull it open, not your left hand. So, because that's the thing, when you open doors, You don't necessarily use whatever hand you normally use, do you? Because it depends kind of how the doors open. Because with my bathroom, the door opens from the right hand side and it opens outwards. Um, not from the left hand side, actually, yeah. And hers did as well. So I use my right hand. Unless I use my left hand. I suppose sometimes I do. You know what? I'm not sure. Isn't that strange? Like something that I do regularly. Maybe I use both hands. Not it's not a heavy door. I don't mean both at the same time. If I have a door made of concrete, I, I don't, I don't. But I wonder, it's like the kind of door you get in pyramids. No, it's not. Yeah, no. Just trying to think, I wonder maybe I do use, maybe I do alternate hands, sometimes left, sometimes right. But the thing is, with her room, with the, the bathroom, maybe the sink was on the left. I'm sure it was on the right though. But anyway, as you come out of the bathroom, turn right, and then turn right again, that was where the bedroom was. And that opened inwards. To the bedroom and I'm just thinking I've never really thought about this before but I suppose all small rooms like a bathroom generally is one of the smallest rooms isn't it the door would open out 
rather than inwards because there's not enough room, perhaps, for the door to open inwards. But with a bedroom or a living room, like what I'm in here, there's more room, isn't there, for the door to open inwards. Because I look at this for like, besides this chair, I just, I'm sitting in here purposely in this chair so that I don't make any noise. Um, otherwise I'd be sitting in a black squeaky chair and be comfortable instead of sitting in a equally squeaky chair here. But not as comfortable. I'll try and keep still. So, what was I going to say? Yeah, the the way that they have manoeuvred the doors and the width of the door and then as the door opens outwards from the bathroom and everything fits perfectly and there's, you know, like that much, di much room between the end of the door and the wall and everything kind of just fits perfect it's very very well designed and the ceiling's quite high as well which is good it doesn't make that much difference to me because i'm f three foot no I'm five foot eight so i'm i'm short compared to the average male uh, generally i think in, well, I don't know, in my town anyway. So I'm not, I think the average kind of height for a man is about 5'10", 5'11". But my, I worked out the height of the ceiling is about 10 foot. So I think that's quite good. Maybe nine foot, I'd say ten. Yeah, I'd say a good. Because, you know, five foot eight is nearly six, isn't it? It's nearly six foot, you know, give or take. So I reckon there's at least another four foot on top of my head. Four feet on my head. So, yeah. It's a nice little flat. So my nan's flat, and this is something that I was surprised about because, which must have been probably a little bit of a shock to her, because she had this little bedroom, and she always had like a nice sized bedroom, you know, I, I'm not, I can't say all her life, but the last 30 years, probably 40, 50 years. She had uh, a nice sized bedroom and then she was in this really small room and I imagine it must have been just a bit different, been a bit different. So there wasn't really much room for her other than the bed and the wardrobe. So I've got a much bigger bedroom here than what she had and But her bathroom possibly was bigger than mine. And uh, so then you come out of the bath, the bedroom, turn right. I don't know how the living room door opened. It, it opened inwards towards the bed, towards the, the living room. But I... I don't think I ever once saw that door closed. I think it was always open. Um, because my nan was a very welcoming person. She was a wonderful person. She was very, very welcoming. So I think that was what it was. She just, there was, wasn't into closed doors. And I'm not particularly welcoming but I do keep most of my doors open, apart from the front door. And, 
you know, all the barbed wire and big signs, keep away. <laughs> Not really. So I quite like to have doors open and have the airflow. So yeah, I think walking into her living room, on the right hand side was a sofa, uh, a settee sofa. And I think it's probably big enough for two of me and, th and but three smaller people. So I've, you, can, you couldn't fit two of me or three of me in onto a, a three seater sofa without like being squashed but it's it was big enough for two uh, comfortably and then to the right hand side there was a table um, in fact I don't know why I'm trying to think what the table is because I've got it with me. It's actually, and these are things that I'm going to keep for the rest of my life. So it's, a, it's like a low table and my nan kept photographs on it. See, I don't keep photographs on it, um, but I do use it. I just don't use it for photographs. Uh, don't really collect photographs but you know my nan built a big family and I, I didn't do any of that stuff but she had lots of grandchildren lots of great grandchildren and uh, yeah so she had lots of big big family so I've got that table it's right directly in front of me now I'm looking at it and it's probably about four foot long and probably just up to my knees high and uh, it's nice it's a nice table so I've got that so that would be on the right hand side and it would be full of cards come like Christmas or birthdays or um, I was gonna, I was gonna say Halloween, but no, um, or Valentine's. What, what's the other Mother's Day, as well, and uh, the. I think at one point she had. Sometimes she, I, I bought her a turtle. A big wooden turtle. And she had it, had that on the table for years. And um, I was able to get hold of that as well. So I've got that. I need to get that out of the storage. But I normally have it on the, um, the side. The, the Another thing that I've got of my nan's, which is the this is what was on the right hand side. So you've got the sofa and next to the sofa was the television, which was on top of a television stand. And I've got the television stand just over there. And it's, um, it's just the basic one, two, three, four, four kind of things, rungs or whatever. So there's room for a, probably a DVD player if I was going to get one um, so it's really cool so I've got you know my nan used to have that so I've got that as well and as you turn around opposite the television there was two chairs one was near the window and there was 
I don't know what was in between, maybe like a table or something. And then there's another chair. So the one near the window is just like a basic, very comfortable chair. You know, just really comfy. But the one next to it, which is the one that my nan spent most of her time in, was, it was like electrical. It wasn't an electric chair, it was electrical as in it could um, move forward and help her to get in and out of the chair. So it was really, really cool. And she used to be in that chair quite a lot. And then the other side of the room, so you've got opposite the window, uh, that was where this table that I've got here used to be. And the table was there with two chairs. Or was it three chairs? No, I've got two chairs. And sometimes I'd sit there at the table, especially if there was a few people there, because it was such a small flat. Um, we couldn't all sit down unless we sat on each other's laps. So we didn't do that. Um, we were too squashed. So sometimes I'd sit at the table, sometimes I'd have some biscuits, have a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and uh, chat to my nan. Sometimes my dad would come round and I'd chat to him as well. So this table was there for a few years. And then when I moved in to this flat, in 2015 I my dad had this table in storage with the chairs and the other table and the television stand and the wooden turtle as well So he brought it up here, and uh, I've had it up here ever since. What was strange, what was strange though, is I um, because I, I I like to work on the website, and I like to uh, you know spend quite a bit of time on the laptop. Uh, uploading videos, MP3s, you know, the work that I do, and promoting it and, you know, various things. Well, one of the chairs collapsed under me, which I couldn't believe. And I like, how, how could this be possible? I know I weighed more than I did, you know, five years ago. When I last sort of sat in, not last sat in it, but um, well, no, that only be yeah, maybe a year before that I'd sat in it. But uh, anyway, I didn't know what to do with it, and my dad he took both the chairs away and he reinforced them, not with steel or anything like that. Uh, but he's, he's, he kind of, he's a, like a bit of a whiz when it comes to anything practical, you know, when it comes to um, rebuilding things with wood and, because uh, he's an electrician by trade, but he can do everything, plumbing, building, bricklaying, roofing, carpentry, he can pretty much seem to be able to do everything. Um, I think changing a light bulb is my pretty much the height of my uh, capability when it comes to practical stuff. But I can do other things. But he reinforced the chairs. So now they're pretty much 
you know, an elephant could sit on them. That's a, that's a silly example. Of course, an elephant couldn't sit on a chair. I mean, chairs aren't big enough for an elephant. How would it get? How would it get through the door? How would it get up the stairs? You know, but so that's not a good example. But that's not the first chair that's broken under me either, because I had this. I bought this sun chair. Uh, it's a sun chair. It's like a a garden chair. It was green. Green or blue? I think it was green. And I thought, you know what? I'll spend some time sitting outside. And maybe, you know, read a book. Just enjoy the summer. Uh, just try and get some... Uh, Vitamin C, vitamin D, whatever it is. Uh, so I don't need to, yeah, I don't know, just, just to get out and I thought it'd be nice. So I bought this chair and it wasn't a lot of money, about £12, something like that. And then it was fine and I sat in it outside and it was cool. And then after having it for about two, three weeks, my friend, uh, I asked him if he'd cut my hair because he's really good at like cutting hair, which is handy because I, I needed him to cut my hair. Uh, if he'd been good at cake decorating, that wouldn't have been quite as useful. Um, but so I'm sitting in the kitchen and he's like cutting my hair, he's cutting a bit of the front, done a bit of the back. And he just said, oh, can you, can you just sit back a bit? So I moved the chair back. So I kind of went to push the chair, so I moved back like that, and the whole of the back of the chair collapsed underneath me. And... I couldn't believe it. It's like, oh, it's 12 pound it cost me. I didn't expect it to last forever, if I'm honest. 12 pound which is probably, what, $14, $15 or whatever. Uh, I wouldn't expect it to last forever. I wouldn't expect to be able to, you know, climb up Mount Everest with it and, you know, use it as a parachute. Or I, Why would I use a chair as a parachute? But, you know, I didn't expect it to, to outlive the pyramids but I thought it'd last the summer. I thought it would, you know, I mean, probably just as well I didn't sit out in the sun, it probably would have melted. But next year I'm gonna get myself another one. Not, not another one from there, um, but I think next year, um, instead of paying 12 pound, I'm gonna try and get one for maybe 14 pound. So that should be better quality. And maybe get a different coloured one. Maybe blue. Although that could have been blue and not green. I some I don't strike sometimes, you know, with blue and green, sometimes I get a little bit muddled between the two colours. There's a level where they line up both the same. But when I think about it in my head, blue and green they seem quite similar. But when I see blue, I can see it as, like, oh, that's blue, that is. And then when I see green, so I'm looking over in front of me and there's a box with some blue. And it's kind of, it's not as kind of blue of the sky, you know, like a blue sky. But it's more bluey blue, sort of quite blue blue. And then I'm looking down and there's a tea towel, but it's green. And that's on the table over there. But it's more very light green. Uh, kind of not grassy green, but potentially kind of that color. 
but there's a level where blue and green seems to mix together but they do don't they they're very they're two very similar kind of colors yeah so that's the story of my table I do like it this uh, don't like this squeaky chair though I forget about it I you know I need to get myself a really comfy chair that doesn't squeak see I was in the I was in a charity shop and a friend of mine she visited me I hadn't seen her since the beginning of the year 2007 and I used to date her we used to be boyfriend girlfriend and eventually we stayed friends I say eventually because it has to be a little bit of a bit of breathing space I suppose um, so we used to talk on the phone, we still do, but we, you know, we kept saying we'll meet up, but we never did. And then a few months ago, I don't know what month it was, I wonder if it was in the summer, or maybe it was, because it's December now, so last month what was that, November, month before that was October month before that was September I reckon it was about September time and she phoned me up in the evening and said I'm coming down I'm visiting you tomorrow and I said oh really she said yeah she said, why do you sound disappointed? I said, oh no, I'm not. I just, just caught me off guard. Um, if I knew you were going to say that beforehand, I could have pretended, <laughs> pretended to be excited. And, um, and I thought, oh, it'd be nice. Why not? Why not? So she came down. And I'm trying to remember the reason why I was mentioning her. She came down. Was it to do with chairs? Oh, that's it. We went into town. What was really weird is I hadn't seen her for absolutely years. Because now 2018, I saw her at the beginning of 2007. So that's, you know, that's quite a long time. And it was a knock at my door. And I looked out of the window, at the, the door, I just looked out. And there was this massive head. I didn't realise that she was really close to the glass. And um, she hasn't got a massive head. It's just, I thought she'd be standing outside, you know, like most people do. But she was basically, it's like her face was, her neck was through the glass already. Like she's managed to like change the metaphysics of her body and, you know, atomically travelled through the uh, door, which he hadn't. Um, so I got a little bit of a shock there. But then, you know, when I stood back, I realised that she was, it was her. And she pretty much looks the same, really, as she did last time. Hasn't really changed that much. That's what I told her. I'm joking, no, yeah, she didn't, she seemed fine, but yeah, basically, it went into town, I, 
she wanted to go into a charity shop. So I went in with her. I did think to myself, well, we haven't seen each other for 11 years, you've traveled all this way, and you wanna spend your time in charity shops. But, you know, that's fine. If she wanted to go shopping and stuff. And I was looking in this, this charity shop, it had quite a few chairs, and I've actually bought a chair from there in the past. And I sat in this chair and it's very had a very high back and I sat in it and it 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 supported my back and my neck and my and it was just like oh this is comfortable, this is nice. And she said to me, What are you what are you doing sitting in that? You're not ninety. And I said to her, so what you're saying is I have to wait until I'm 90 years old before I can sit in a chair and be comfortable. And I was quite pleased with myself because it was very quick, it came very quickly. And it's like, oh, it was kind of a, a nice comeback, but also at the same time, it was quite poignant. I always used to think poignant meant pointy when I was a kid. Very pointy, very poignant. So please like this if you like it. Please leave a nice little comment if you want to. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And realise that doing a live stream on YouTube, unless I tell people beforehand I'm going to do it. Just amounts of people watching live. If I go live on Facebook, uh, I get people come online straight away and watching. Quite a few do just like pass through though. Uh, some people stay. But you know, I wanna, I wanna give to the YouTube audience and the Facebook audience because I know that not everybody on YouTube or my that follow me on YouTube follow me on Facebook in the same way as not everyone that follows me on Facebook follows me on Twitter, and you know, it's there, you know, so it's. just trying to be available for everybody that I can, you know, as many people as possible. And I've got quite a few uh, loyal followers on YouTube that have been following me um, and my squeaky chair for years and years and years. And every time I open a new YouTube channel, you come and join me again. And I do appreciate that. So please subscribe if you haven't done already. If you've fallen asleep, then brilliant. And just remember that the more you listen to me, the quicker you'll feel tired and want to sleep. And if nothing else, I hope that you're feeling more relaxed now than you did before you decided to let go and spend an hour with me. Thank you for watching. Lots of love and remember that you are an amazing person and you deserve to be happy. Bye. find a way to turn this off without my thumb, my finger going right in it. Oh, I know what I'll do. See ya.